Well, the 72 hour window is past for the most recent atrocities. Honestly, I'm not quite ready to talk about them in all of their details yet because I'm still doing some research, but I do have something today that I think every person of every political persuasion can take steps right now to keep their community, themselves, their family more safe. And uh, this crosses all political boundaries. It crosses all ideas of what we should be doing as a nation. But this one thing can help us in significant ways. I have several different medical kits here that I always have with me and with mine. And I wanna talk to you about them a little bit to show you how to carry the medical equipment that you might need on you to help someone in any kind of traumatic bleeding scenario. <clears throat> now let me say at the outset, you have to have training in order to use this stuff. It doesn't take crazy levels of training, but FEMA is teaching stop the bleed classes or there are multiple qualified people teaching stop the bleed. And we're talking about stopping massive hemorrhage. And uh, you know that's the one thing that you will bleed out in 60 seconds with massive hemorrhage as, as little as 60 seconds. You can go you know, five minutes or more without breathing, but 60 seconds and you're dead from blood loss. And so having some traumatic bleeding stopping, incredibly important. I think for all self-defenders, those who carry firearms for self-defense that it's incredibly vital to have uh, the means of you know keeping life and saving life on you as well and I will tell you this I, I'm just gonna say uh, you know I haven't been a first responder at a mass casualty but since I got training and since I started carrying my equipment I'm telling you I have been the first responder at more wrecks than I can shake a stick at and we've had to use the kit a couple times and the knowledge that comes with carrying something like this in incredible ways. So I've kind of got mama bear, papa bear, baby bear kind of stuff here for you. So um, first of all, I'm gonna start with my everyday carry, okay? So this is my uh, wilderness ankle cuff and um, I, I'm just gonna show you, I wear this every single day, usually under a pair of pants. Um, uh, but it's funny, my friend John McLaughlin just said he wears his with shorts and it engenders some conversations and I'm kind of thinking I might try that a little bit. It's summertime here in Arizona and that means uh, short weather for sure. So what is in here? I'm not gonna unpack everything for you, but I will show you what is going on inside this. Number one, um, I'll just kind of go around. These are some high fin mini chest seals because again, our overall strategy is we seal the trunk, we pack the junctions, we tourniquet the limbs. So high fin compact chest seals. The compact ones because they fit a little bit better. This is an H&H &H mini compression bandage and uh, the mini one because a compression bandage can act like a tourniquet, especially on smaller limbs. So so anybody who says, oh, you gotta have a tourniquet that's built specifically for children, nope, a compression bandage, and it works well for adults for non-tourniquet-like injuries. Next down here is some Sealox Z-Fold gauze. Uh, quick clot's fine. Any of the hemostatics is great. This is for junctional wounds where I can't necessarily tourniquet, but I gotta get some packed pressure in there where we pack, pile, press, and pray. Um, finally, a tourniquet. This is a soft tee. I carry the soft tee wide in here because it's a little bit more compact. Um, I actually used to have a, I just, just got a Gen 4, but it's got a, um, a different kind of windless hold on it and it was really uncomfortable, so I went back to this one. Uh, finally, I keep a pair of Leatherman Raptors because having some trauma shears is important to me in this and a pair of nitrile gloves. Now, a couple things on this. Um, a, uh, the whole kit to put together is about 200 bucks. That's just what it costs. It's what it cost me. I didn't get any of this on shill. I got it on, uh, you know, on, on paying for it. Well, I guess I ought to be careful with that. Sam at the Wilderness did give me the ankle cuff because I gave mine to my pastor. Um, but a uh, couple things. Do not buy tourniquets on Amazon, okay? I'm going to put links in the description to where you can buy all this stuff if you want. The Amazon links will be affiliate links. That's life. But um, the, the tourniquet ones, no, I, don't do that. Don't buy them on Amazon. Too many fakes, okay? So so this is what I carry on me every day. But when I'm on the range and when I'm not on the range, it stays in the car, I have this much more stout kit. And this stouter kit works great for the car, works great for the range. Um, and if you see me shooting videos, you'll see me with this guy on me. We just finished this new one, in fact. Sam uh, and her team at Wilderness Tactical just finished this one for me. So it's made to go on the belt. You can see here, you can rip this off here and it you know slides onto my belt. I use this on the range now all the time. We just finished this prototype. Has a Cat Gen 7 on the outside. Again, do not buy tourniquets on Amazon. Period, and end of subject. If I go inside this guy, it's built for ease of use. You can rip that guy open pretty fast if you stage it right. Inside, I have another cat, uh, Gen 7 in here. I have two full-size hyphen chest seals because I have the space to do those. I have a four-inch 
pressure dressing. I have some quick clot on the inside, hemostatic, paranitrile gloves, and a uh, Sharpie to write on somebody if I need to, or to uh, keep things down. So this is guy has got a little bit more for it, a little bit larger, a little bit more stout kit that is still nevertheless very compact. So I could put this in my trunk of my car. I could put this on my belt on the range. I could keep this nearby pretty easy. Now then, if I wanted to go smaller, uh, I have two smaller options here, and this is a basic pocket medical system here uh, that they have. I have one in Coyote and one in Black. I have it set up two ways. Uh, number one, I have this one with a Gen 4 Soft Tee wide. I have a H&H uh, &H mini compression bandage and a pair of nitrile gloves. And that's a little thick, uh, but you know, you had a cargo pocket, a purse, something like that, go in there real easy. Even thinner than that is this one that just has a four inch pressure dressing and a pair of nitrile gloves. Now, a four inch pressure dressing, if you know how to use it, can uh, function in many cases like a tourniquet and do many things that a tourniquet can do. I really would like to have a full tourniquet system. So that's why I tend to keep this guy on me all the time. So uh, which one's right for you? Gosh, guys, I don't know, man. Um, I really keep this guy out in the car all the time and it goes with me to the range. So when I go and put my range bag in the car, it goes in my range bag, goes with me on my body. Um, this is always on me all the time. Now, now, I will say this, I don't keep a pair of shears in here because I always have this guy on me that has a pair of shears on it. If I didn't do this, I would keep a pair of shears in here as well, so then that way you can uh, use those. If, if you come across somebody, you need to see if they're, they've got a broken bone or, or bleeding somewhere, you need to find where that is. It's important to have. Um, you know, Even if you'll have this and get the training, gosh, guys, I, I just think one way that we could get better as a society is to mandate in our high schools, in our junior colleges, stop the bleed training and getting people ready to stop massive hemorrhaging. Um, is that the end all solution? No, we can talk about that another day in another video. But I think just having some medical equipment on your person that says, I'm here not just for a mass casualty, which we should be there for mass casualty, but for a car wreck, but for uh, you know somebody who falls through a pane of glass. Um, you know, when we have significant problems, bleeding will kill you in 60 seconds, uh, you know, on a bad day. Whereas breathing won't kill you for uh, five, six minutes. And, and so you have much better chance here if you have the ability and the knowledge on stopping the bleed. So this is something that I really think that you should think about. And I'll put links to all this stuff in the description. Again, uh, Wilderness Tactical, I just want to be very clear, is not a sponsor of the channel. They're a friend of the channel. Um, and so I don't make anything from those links and that's totally fine. They do have one for you for the ankle medical kit. If you sign up for their email list, um, they give you five bucks off. So the kit itself, the, the, the cuff itself is 35 bucks. Um, do not buy. I'm going to send you links to uh, the, the tourniquets from the Commit Committee of Tactical Combat Casualty Care. And I want you to buy them at the source. Do not buy fakes on Amazon, period and end of subject. And as we move forward, we'll talk some more about some more things that I think we can do to kind of think through some of these issues of mass casualty events and mass killers. But all of us can do this no matter where we are on the political spectrum, no matter what we believe about how to stop them. We can do this to protect ourselves, our loved ones, and get better. Because you know, if you think about it again, uh, even though the, the Ohio police stopped the killer so quickly, it took a long time, of course, for EMS to get in there because they had to make sure it was a cold zone first. And so you're your first responder. You're your ability to stop the bleeding for your family. No one is coming to save you in, in an ultimate sense. So uh, if nothing else, uh, I think that our current climate says, carry your medical equipment and your gear, and God bless you, everyone.